Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 33 with last game tonight. Going to be Google Frog versus Lowry on Red Comet. Uh, speaking of light vehicle maps, we have Red Comet, which is pretty much the iconic one. That or Comet Catcher Redux, but I think Comet Catcher Redux is just more of the iconic Total Annihilation map. At any rate, get it going. I don't think these players require any introduction, but if they do, just go watch the last tournament casts. Because. Actually, I think they were the bronze match. If I recall correctly, in the, last, in the July tournament, these two were the bronze match. Hmm. Yes, that's exactly right. They were the bronze match. And in that game... I won't spoil it. Go watch the replay. It's on YouTube. Or the cast, rather. It's on YouTube. Now, get to the game proper. And we go. Lowry going for heavy tanks. More his classic style. He has been playing a lot of hovercraft recently, but heavy tank, that is that is what he did. That is what he's known for, is heavy tanks. But during the tournament, he's playing a ton of hovercraft. Google Frog, on the other hand, is going for hovercraft. So we're seeing all the vehicle factories today. Google Frog going very quickly for three, three daggers into a builder. So not super heavy rating, but still enough. While Panther is the order of the day for Lowry. Not even going for the early Kodachi. Just opening Panther into Welder. Doesn't want to go for the fire raids, which a little unusual, but then again, Panther Spam is kind of the bread and butter of the heavy tank factory. Kodachis are really good for raiding, but are kind of tricky to use well, and I mean, Lowry can use them well, but I think he's just, or, well, I think they're just figuring that, you know what, just use the Panther. It works. It works really well. It's a pretty sensible choice, so I can't say I can argue with that. Anyway, Google Frog. Going pretty much repeat daggers for now. This is the Raider phase of the game, so they that we're going to be seeing a lot of daggers. Not sure if Google Frog is going to be going for one massive group of daggers to try to alpha everything out, or go for several groups, one to distract the Panthers, and one to just go around this back, take out mid-like tractors. Once you get four daggers or so, you can basically one-shot anything base, or at least any basic building. Like, mid-like tractors go down, see, so 110 each, so yeah, mid-like tractors go down once you have four of them in one shot. Panthers... Panthers actually would be kind of tough. In fact, the daggers are a bit of a disadvantage. It takes two shots for... Well, three shots for this many. Three shots for three. Actually, four shots for three. Three shots for four. The Panther basically has a thousand health, so... Not the easiest matchup. So, Google Frog probably just going to clump these guys up. And expanding along... F well, simple corner expansion. Sending the worker out along the north edge of the map while sending the commander down south. On the east side of the map, while well, Lowry going pretty much the opposite. Sending the commander along the wide side, while the narrow side being handled by the worker, which is more typical. Usually the commander does go along the wide... Well, I should say, goes west to east or east to west. And leaves a worker to go for the more defensible edge. Not sure exactly why Google Frog is doing it that way. A little unusual, but... Well, let's think about it. My guess is that they're probably expecting an attack from the center. It's not unusual for people to attack from the center through one of these choke points and then push up from there to get to the factory. I think Google Frog might be suspecting that. At any rate, Google Frog is going to have to deal with this Panther, and Kodachi is up as well, along with the Lotus, and Lowry pushing back these, well, these daggers. One of the daggers does get caught out, though, and gets killed promptly for its mistake, or at least for the Pathfinding mistake. It's one of the reasons why I really hope that the new engine gets properly cleaned up and adopted. Or just adopted, really. I know there are some issues, but vehicle pathfinding is not one of them. However, Google Frog is going for the north path instead, not going through the center, and will be basically getting this quill. Killing it off pretty quickly, or at least trying to. The daggers are making a valiant effort to deal with it, but they are not going to have that easy of a time. As mentioned before, the alpha is in the advantage of the panther. But merely the panther is fairly damaged, but even then, one dagger is going to burn to death, and these daggers have to be careful, too. The Kodachi does have splash damage. If it hits them, they are dead. Like, 300 health each. That Kodachi will kill them. Actually, it'll... Well, okay, it's... I kind of wish I would mention what the total damage is, but I'm fairly certain it's greater than 300. At any rate, if it isn't, it's definitely problematic regardless. Still a lot of damage. But Google Frog is pushing out. Lowry, however, does have an economic advantage. A slight one, but still does have the advantage. Google Frog pushing their commander along the center. So that's what they're trying to do. 
They were going for more of a square opening rather than trying to expand along two lines, like Lowry is. Which actually is pretty typical for Google Frog. Google Frog is tendency to go for the center, but... In this case, you know what? Actually will, I think, work. Yeah, down goes the Panther. The Kodachi is going to go down fairly quickly as well, and... Those daggers are working out. And now going for the raid, we'll be able to one-shot Metal Extractor, so defense is going to be very difficult. There goes one Metal Extractor, and that Lotus is going to go down in another volley. Just about not even worry about that. No, just going straight for the Metal Extractors, and Lotus is being built up everywhere. Kodachi giving chase, but not able to catch up. However, the Lotuses do take care of about two-thirds of those. Well, at least that particular group of daggers. Still, Lowry is expanding faster, expanding harder. Google Frog trying to go, like I said, more central. Well, Lowry is going for the flanks, and I think it's working out for Lowry. You can see from the numbers here, it is a slight advantage for Lowry, which is exacerbated by the fact that Lowry does have a production, well, not production advantage yet. The production is about the same, but Google Frog does not have caretakers being built up while Lowry does. Google Frog does have a quill right in the back here, though. A caretaker could be built up, but the quill alone could be used to help out, but even then, Google Frog is flooding metal. Needs to be pointed out, Google Frog is using a lot of the metal to build up defenses, however, which we actually saw in, not the tournament, I think in one of the recent games I casted, but, might have been the tournament, giant defender nest built on this map by Google Frog in the center. I think it was actually in the bronze match. At any rate, Google Frog now has to deal with three Kodachis, which do overkill one of the Quill, or I think one of the daggers. Quill's not in the range, but one of the daggers does go down, another dagger about to go down, and few more set on fire, and all these Kodachis will be able to take care of the dagger without too much issue. Just a couple of them need to retreat. These two are... No, just one of them is deathly wounded. Yeah, Lowry is slowly but surely taking the advantage, but even then it's actually managed to even out. Google Frog, fairly even for economy, but like I said, not even for production. Caretaker is being built up, but that's 30 seconds away, while Lowry has two already used. There's already 35 metal being pushed into this factory, and Lowry can... Well, get more, get reclaimed for more as well. Not a huge amount of reclaim, but still some. I mean, it's always good to have a bit. But yeah, Lowry is... Lowry's kind of splitting out the center. Does have... Well, these metal extractors... Actually, these metal extractors aren't that safe. This one is fairly safe. Not especially safe, but somewhat safe. This one this one are not safe thanks to the Defender Nest. So this is no man's land right here. Google Frog actually does have these metal extractors, so Google Frog can take the economic advantage. To point that out, Google Frog does actually have the potential because... They're symmetric right now, but Google Frog has about... Wow, 2.28, yeah. Google Frog has about 9 metal. 9 metal per second just hanging out in the back of their base. That's safe to take. They can just take whatever they want. Actually, over here as well. So, a grand total of about 15 metal that Google Frog could just take. And they're already even, so Lowry is actually falling behind a bit. Though, at the same time, Lowry... Oh, actually, no, with these scalpels here... Yeah, these scalpels are going to be a bit of a pain. The Kodachis won't be able to get in in time. The scalpels can kite them out fairly effectively. And same with the Panthers. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw Reapers or Banishers fairly soon. And Or airplanes. This is a bit risky, though. Scalpels can hit air. And they can hit it pretty effectively, especially half a dozen of them. That's going to take up pretty much anything. There is a Thunderbird coming in. First thing coming up is the Thunderbird. That, if it gets off, will be pretty much all that's needed for Lowry to just push in, tear everything apart with the Kodachis and go. But at the same time, Google Frog does have, well, just the hovers. That's about it. Like I said, the scalpels are working out, and the scalpels can kite out everything, can deal with air. The Kodachis, however, do have the reload time, and Lowry trying to take full advantage of that, sets the scalpel on fire, but does lose the Kodachi. Oh, no, not quite. Nope, does lose it. Never mind. Thought it managed, thought it managed to dodge. Did not quite manage to dodge, so yeah. Google Frog takes out a Kodachi for basically free. Loses a Defender in the process, but that's not particularly expensive. For a Kodachi, that was that was a worthwhile trade. Lowry lost out on that one. It is something had economically thanks to Reclaim, but like I said, Google Frog has 15 metal. Okay, a bit less now. They're starting to take some of them. But still has about 9 metal that they can take that is free. But Lowry, still ahead, still ahead by production, does have this Thunderbird up. And caretakers are now up for Google Frog, so the production is even. The economy is basically even. The army is slightly in Lowry's advantage. Though, like I said, a lot of it is born on the wings of the planes here, which... Like I said, the scalpels basically tear apart with surgical precision. And... 
We'll see that happen fairly shortly. Actually, we'll see that happen right now. The Thunderbird coming in and going for it, but missing this Galpus completely and gonna pay for it with his life. Like I said, does manage to stun out exactly zero of them. No, one of them. One of them does get stunned out, and the Kodachi's taking advantage of the reload time, going in during the recovery, and managing to take out a couple of Medley Striders, managed to take out a couple Galbals in the process as well. Take a couple Defenders as well, just breaking this open for round two, but does Laudy have a round two? That's the big question. Laudy does have Pillagers coming in, which aren't really round two. They're more softening up. They're more prep. However, the real question is... What is Lowry going to do with these planes? I mean, all these scalpels in place. The Kodachi can sort of help, but it depends on the recovery time, because... Oh! That was weird. What are they firing at? Well, at any rate, flails are up as well. That's the dedicated anti-air. I mean, the scalpels weren't enough. The dedicated anti-air is up, and... The Ravens are trying to do what they can. They are managing to take out or damage some quills, but even then, it's not enough. But... Fortunately for the Raven, does manage to outrun that particular set of scalpel shots. Still, has to be careful about that. The scalpels can hit it pretty effectively. However, Google Frog is softened up here. Does have a couple of Halberds scouting out as well, wasting some of the shots for the Kodachis and giving away the positions of all that. And also, pointing out that Lowry has gone for a Cloaky Vax, which has actually happened a little while ago, but wasn't too relevant. As is Google Frog. Both players going for a Cloaky Bot Factory. Google Frog's a bit more proxy, though. Both players going for it, and Lowry, however, this is round two. These glaives, that's that's just going to push in to win, because scalpels, I mean, they're going to waste a bunch of shots on it. The Kodachis are there. They are there. The Kodachis are there for follow-up. So it's going to happen. Those glaives are going to move in. They're going to distract the scalpels. Nice fake target. The Kodachis are going to come in soon after, possibly with air support, and tear everything apart while the scalpels here are on reload. And remember, the scalpel has a 10 second reload time. That is plenty of time. Huge amount of time that they're vulnerable for. I mean, this is... This is huge. This is going to be basically baiting out... I guess baiting out a super into block into a reversal from fighting game terminology, which really I don't know why I'm bothering to use, even though I have been casting Skullgirls more often recently. But yeah, you can actually really bait supers in that game. You just sort of punish them. And that's the same idea. It's going to be punishing this Calpo reload time. But it hasn't happened yet. Lowry apparently not confident in their numbers, which... Can't say I'm surprised, but... Once they get enough numbers, they will push in. But, like I said, Google Frog going for Rectors... No, sorry. Going for Gremlins to deal with the air. So, going very strong anti-air, which is not surprising. I mean, you have all these units here. Lowry has a lot to work with. But at the same time, we do have Pillagers. They are pushing in for Lowry. Google Frog has a lot of Halberds coming in. Probably just distraction targets and scouts figuring out what's going on and possibly trying to deal with what they can. But given all the defenders here, probably best to use the scouts and distractions for the pillagers. Same time, hammers coming out for themselves. Lowry came in pretty strong with the hammers, getting rid of all the defensive structures in the wave, but Lowry has her. Google Frog is the one with the hammers. And Lowry with the pillagers, not quite so accurate. While well, Goofrog goes in for the attack, trying to get rid of Lowry's commander, and will succeed in doing so. Lowry's commander goes down with one volley of scalpel shots, and the Glaive's coming in for the counterattack. While the scalpels are in reload time, the Glaive's going to come in, and some of them will die as well, but like I said, that's all they need to do. Distract the scalpels, and here come, here comes the Air Force, which won't be as effective as likely hopes, but still manages to stun out half of the... Well, okay, half of the scalpels go down, one of the flails go down, and the Glaive's coming in to finish it off. Huge amount of damage coming in with the Glaives. And the Mesas were here to prep, but even then, too many Glaives for the Mesas to deal with. Scalpel's going down, trying to deal with the damage as best they can, but even then, the Glaives, they can take it. And that just tore apart the entire north side, leaving Lowry to come in for the second round of Glaive attack, which is going to finish everything off. Pushing it in the north. Google Frog with a valiant effort of defense over to the north, and the Hammers over to the south have been stopped. And there wasn't really much to comment on that one, but... Yeah, the Glaive's coming through that center that I mentioned very early on that is a very common attack vector, and there you see it happen. There's the Glaive's coming in on that attack vector. Gonna take out the entire center, gonna take out the southeast as well, as you can see, basically going along... Sorry, the southwest. Going along that, tearing apart everything. These scalpels will take way too long to stop them. The scalpels over here, not gonna work out. They're gonna try, but they're gonna not make it. They're gonna fail, and Google Frog's gonna lose all their economy, really. At this point, Lowry does have 
It does have a massive military advantage. I'm gonna have to drop the font size to show it. Yeah, 10k. 10k military advantage on 7.1, so 3k difference. And that's without the commander. I should point out, Google Frog has their commander alive. Lowry doesn't. And Google Frog's commander is level 0, but still has 1200 medals, so really it's 10,000 to 6,000. Now, granted, nice use of ticks there. Very well done. Which I just want to actually do leave reaction now. That's actually, a, that was a change in a recent patch. Ticks, roaches, scuttles, and... I can't remember what else. Dirtbags, I think. There's a couple, basically everything that dies and either by exploding itself or just leaving something else like dirtbags. I believe dirtbags, at least. They all leave wreckage. Suicide units leave wreckage. Blastwings, I think, also leave wreckage, which because they're suicide units. So, yeah. All of them leave wreckage now, but Lowry doesn't really care. Google Frog is trying to push in with Counter Glaze, but, okay. Google Frog has 7. Lowry has 38. There is a slight discrepancy there. I think Lowry has the advantage. Don't want to call it too soon, but I think Lowry may come out on top in this one. However, it does come down to Micro. Actually, there is... I'm, I'm being facetious, but it does kind of come down to the fact that Lowry is balling up their Glaze a lot, and Glaze can't shoot through each other. Important fact. Lowry is not staggering them especially well. She is dot moving them, not line moving them, but doesn't seem to matter. Thunderbird coming in, suicide mission to stun out half the scalpels, and the Glaive is just running through. Don't really care. Don't really care about the dot move or line move. They're just tearing everything apart. Too many to count. Okay, not actually too many to count anymore. In fact, there's there's 18. That could be counted fairly easily. But still coming in for yet another attack along the center. Not going with the caretakers, though. Not going up north, trying to deal with that. Just going to the center once again. Slowing down the economy further. And Lowry is still pushing out, primarily into the Cloakabot factory. Switching over to Rocco's. Guess wants to deal with the scalpels toe-to-toe, -to -toe rather than trying to deal with them more directly. The mace is being torn apart by defenders and air units. Shadow, sorry, Ravens and defenders are doing a decent job. Ravens, primarily. And in come the Glaives, tearing apart yet another Lotus. Two more Lotuses, although... Glazers are taking a fair amount of damage in the process, but even then, the Lotus is going down. The Caretakers are the big target. I'm surprised Lowry isn't going for that. Is taking on the Metal Ace which are also fairly big targets, especially with the Overdrive. There's actually a lot of Overdrive going on, and this is going to be killing Google Fox economy, if nothing else. And there they come. Glaze coming around the Solar Wall, tearing apart the Metal Ace here, and trying to go for the Caretakers. So he's trying to go around. Lowry is going to be aware of the Caretakers, and there it goes. One of the Caretakers does go down. No, they aren't even being used on the factory right now. In fact, the factory is not being assisted whatsoever. Very surprisingly, but yeah, those characters are not helping out, and Lowry gets rid of one, but not a whole lot. And counterattack coming in from Google Frog, or at least counter defense. Gremlins coming in to try to deal with the Aryans, but even then, doesn't much matter. All the scalpels are most of them fire off their payloads. Get dodged. No, don't get dodged. That Raven flies right into it, unfortunately, for it. And the Raven is forced to retreat on top of that, which is. Bit of a pain. And the Pillar's getting hit by the Scalpel Rockets as they run out of ammo. Actually, mostly the Lotus getting hit, but still. Pillager's trying to do with the cannon. Friendly fire apparently among their job description. That was probably not intentional. Hitting the mountain with a rocket on top, but even then, doesn't really help out. It's a bit of area denial, but Google Frog doesn't seem to care. It's not killing the units, not really mattering all that much, but even then, Lowry still has the production and economy advantages. Google Frog continuing to produce, or pushing the characters back into the factory, and given the economy nerf, or not nerf, <laughs> given the economy harassment, not only nerf, but the fact that their economy has been damaged heavily, this production advantage, or production, not advantage, the production advantage is the economy advantage. There is no production advantage separate from the economy advantage at this point. Both players do have more characters and workers than they need, more build power than they have metal, and in Louder's case, more of an army. Rock was yet yeah, there, they're coming in and basically dealing with the scalpels on their terms. Which, actually, more like dealing with the lotuses on their terms. And Google Frog realizes he can't deal with this and throws in the towel. That was game. Sort of. Well, I, I think. Oh. I see. Apparently, that. Did Google, I think Google Frog went for mass self destruct rather than a resign. You know, F10, resign, or escape, resign. So, yeah, that was the game. That was an interesting game. I like that. That was a good one. So yeah, that... That was it. Thank you all for watching. That'll be it for me tonight. That'll be all. So... Thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.